Hey, this is Asbal with the Gaming Orc, and this is a new video series for 8-Ball Pool called One Shot. This is where I beat the opponent in one shot, and I was reviewing a lot of the games I play in 8-Ball Pool, and most of the games usually go on for five minutes, so it's a very casual, friendly game of pool. It's better than playing in the bar, and you kind of get the same sensation. But this video series, I'm going to talk about some of the shots and shot selections I make where I beat the opponent in one shot, and sometimes I'm doing other activities so I play on lower end tables and this is going to kind of help you I'm not the greatest pool player uh, but I think I'm okay um, I'm good enough to kind of talk to you about some of the shots and if you guys are playing this game and there's definitely better players out there who can make it up now out of all the games I have only I only do 10% of the time roughly I do a one shot I was looking back um, the one shot counts as any shot I do or any um, series of shots where I, I go down to the eight ball and hit the eight ball in without letting the opponent get a shot off. Or the opponent gets one shot off and then I'm able to do it in one shot. And so sometimes, like some of the games I've recorded, then probably about another 10% of the games or 10 or 20% of the games, I get down to the eight ball by itself. And then there's a lot of games where I was looking back and, you know, it's good if you're playing this game, it's good to record. If you want to become a better player at this game, record yourself um, using the play app and look at some of the shot selections you make and just see like, hey, am I hitting the ball too hard? So I've hit a few balls in here and I'm solid. So I'm looking, this thing's looking pretty good. You can see how I hit the ball real soft there. And I'm aiming, and I brought it all the way back because what I want to do is hit the uh, the four ball in there in the corner. Put a little bit of um, roll spin on it, it looks like. I want it to roll backwards. Um, this is the trick I was talking about. See, I roll it back. I didn't roll it perfectly back, but I gave myself a very easy shot there. And see, the eight is just lined up in the, po in the corner pocket there, so it's really nice. So the game is kind of over, pretty easy game here to win. And I didn't even get my, I mean, the, the whole thing about one shot, if you one shot someone, they could be the best pool player in the world. So they really only have an opportunity if you miss the break. And this guy's like, hey, you're good. I'm like, thanks. You know, score one for the good guys here. And that's a pretty easy game. Um, what I notice if I'm playing at higher levels too, I'm playing at like 26. The games are difficult. I'm always playing against... This game is designed as sort of like the ELO system, where you're playing pretty much against people of your own difficulty level. So you might might as well play if you can at higher tables. Cause you're going to be playing the same difficulty, so you might as well be playing for more chips if you can. Um, I realized, like I was looking at one of the daily deals today, they only offer 37,000 chips. So like the Tokyo and above tables, those are for the really, really good players. So here I hit the, uh, mid, the my opponent has gone first here, and he hit that ball kind of too hard. See, so he almost scratched there, and that's one of the things I was talking about. So you want to try to avoid getting yourself into a difficult spot where you have to cut that ball real hard, and as a result, you hit it too hard, and you end up scratching. So he actually uses the backspin technique there, um, but it, he brought it back okay, um, and also I noticed like your cue can also make a difference. So there's some like, you know, the cue that you use can almost do some smart function. In it, you know, and so this guy left himself a real bad shot. So, you know, now it's time, you know, since it's a one shot video, you know, I'm going to beat him. And uh, that's how it works. So he had a breakout. He has a couple balls. And so he accidentally hit it, that ball too hard and he broke it. He broke up the other ball. Now look at this is how you one shot. This is how you get to a one shot situation. Is that all the balls are broken up? I really don't have a very difficult shot. I might have a few long ball shots um, with the six and the seven right in the left there, but other than that, uh, I don't have any problem cleaning this table up. You're just gonna watch me uh, hit the balls pretty softly here. I'm gonna combo this one. And I almost hit that ball too hard, and I almost scratched, um, but I didn't. But in some games, so like the 10% thing, I could hit that ball probably a little softer. 
but almost when you're aiming for that corner and I hit that ball I don't know why I hit that ball so hard I think I was trying to bring it down the table or I wanted to bounce it back like that so now I'm, I, I almost thought about going for the other ball but I don't really want to knock that ball out and it looks like I'm about I could also scratch on this shot so I gotta be real careful so I'm trying to angle that ball in that corner pocket without trying to scratch. And see, I almost scratched right there. But I left it, I hit it just right. And that's, I want to hit it with that heart speed, amount of speed to actually line up there. And that was probably hit around the second bar. I use the bars on the left um, when I'm using the power of the stick to gauge how much power I'm doing. And that also depends on the stick that you're using. So it's very stick sensitive. I did not leave myself a good shot. I should have put some English on that and rolled that ball forward a little bit. And now again, I have a difficult shot. Not a super difficult shot, but a, a more challenging shot than it needed to be. I could have rolled it. But sometimes when you roll that ball, ball forward, you're gonna scratch. And I also hit that ball too hard. Now I had to make a really difficult cut. So this is a part of like, what I, one of the biggest pieces of advice is like, I, as I'm watching some, some of these shots, even though I'm doing really well, is that I'm still hitting that ball too hard in most cases. Like I can I can hit a lot softer. That means under the um, the first line. See now I have to hit this ball and I hit it with max speed. And unfortunately, it did not scratch it because I cut it real real well. So the ball just jiggled back and forth. Another easy win there. Here I end up getting the break and um, you can see that five ball there. Is giving a problem so I'm looking at the table and I'm looking for groups of balls that are grouped up that's one thing a lot of other players do they look for challenging shots so you see my sticks not moving because I'm assessing the table I'm trying to determine what I want to go for and what I really want to do is just try to knock that my challenge is going to be to knock that uh, eight ball out so I'm going to figure out a way through some some shot and since I'm going um, I went stripes. I got to figure out a way to knock that eight ball out. Now I could try to go for it right now. That's probably what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to try to hit that ball in, and you can see I'm going to combo the other ball out, and I'm going to somehow jiggle that eight ball out or hit his ball in, and I did. I, I successfully was able to move his ball out of the way so I can make a clear shot in the eight. See, I'm trying to win the game here. You know, that's the whole point. I, unfortunately, I don't have a really good shot. I'm trying to force a shot there, and I, I realize, like, hey, so I have to move on to another shot. Now, if we were playing in Vegas, and I tried to play, I'd have to call that pocket, and now I would have to try to make a shot or get try to play a defensive play. So I go for the easier shot, and I can go for that shot, or I can go for the other one. And I decided to go for this other one because that's probably the only angle I could get a clear shot in my pocket. So sometimes I'll go for a more a harder shot when that's the really the only way I could get that shot. Because I'd have to hit it that specific angle. And I didn't hit it hard enough to actually leave myself a clear shot. But that's okay. I still have this ball. But see, now I have to make a difficult cut because I was trying to hit that other ball. But I did not hit it hard enough. So I end up hitting the balls out. Unfortunately, I had tipped that. I got a little lucky there. I tipped that eight ball. So that's the difference between sort of a a better player than myself. They'd be able to predict that, and they wouldn't hit a wild shot like that just to try to slot sort of slop that eight ball out. Fortunately, I cleared that fourteen out. I hit it. Still, I hit it. Look at how hard I hit that ball. I did not need to hit it, and so I left myself a much harder shot than I needed to. I could have hit that ball much softer, left on the other side of the table, but. That's okay, and I'm gonna try to hit this just pretty soft because now I'm planning to hit the eight, so I'm actually going down, looks like to the second line, and I hit it too hard again. So that's one thing I'm learning as I'm watching these videos is like, hey, you know, don't hit the ball so hard. And that, but fortunately I left a clear line there, and this guy, uh, unfortunately, even though there was two solids hit on the break, I saw that one solid blocking the eight, so, uh, so I saw that was going to be a difficult shot for him to hit. Looks like I'm breaking again here, and I'm just moving that my little icon there because unfortunately I have a really good. I put a forward spin on there, and I don't. You look at the table right now. This creates a one-shot situation, and fortunately I hit a ball in because if I didn't hit a ball in, my opponent might be able to one-shot me. 
but since the break was so good, we had a solid and a stripe in. I'm deciding to hit this really easy one because if you look at the stripes, they're on the rails of the table, so they make it harder. And also, you see that solid there in the in the side pocket, making it for an easy shot. There's a group of uh, so, uh, stripes right there, so I'm just kind of going for the easy one. I want to back that ball up so I can try to get a shot on the four. I'm probably going to, or I can hit the corner, and I'm hitting it a little too hard, but that's just what you have to do. Now, if I was didn't hit it right enough, I would have hit that ball incorrectly. I think I'm going to go for the four here. Now, there's a that's the challenging ball right there. Oh, here we go. Got another shot here. So I'm able to cut this ball, and this is probably one of the only ways I could hit this ball in. So I fortunately got lucky, and I got a nice spin on that ball out. But, I mean, sir, you could say it's luck, but... I hit that ball really well. So now I can leave myself with a combo or I can hit the four and then uh, or come back. So I decided to combo because I can just hit that ball real softly in there and give me two easy shots. Then I can manipulate and probably backspin the four out and cut on the eight. So the game's kind of over at this point. And the reason why the game is over is because I had a good break. You know, I had a real easy break, easy shots. Now, if I miss a shot at all, my opponent at this point can probably clean it clean up the table I mean I don't he has one difficult shot on the 10 uh, down there it looks like yeah and that's it so I'm gonna have to hit this ball real soft this is gonna be perfect position though um, so there was a couple ways I could play that this way is a little easy see I'm just tapping it right over that see see when I'm hitting that ball soft at least such a good position for me and really lowers my scratch percentage and really easy cut into the eight I just have to hit this ball semi hard and let's see how hard I hit it. I hit it probably a little too hard there, but see I could have scratched in that corner there. See I didn't need to hit that ball that hard. And this guy wants a rematch because <laughs> he got cleaned up. My opponent is breaking this time. So this is the danger, you know, of breaking. Like and that's where eight ball pool is a little bit of luck, where even probably the really good players, if they miss it, they got like a seventy percent chance, eighty percent chance of winning. Because they missed that break against better players because, you know, we're level 28 players. He actually does break. I thought sometimes opponents actually pass and they leave the opportunity for me to break. For whatever reason, they just don't want to break. And he actually has a pretty good break. You see two stripes there in the bottom rails. That's going to be hard. So he actually does that. And he kind of, I don't know if he purposely planned that out. Also, two solids were in. So he probably just wanted to go solids. So some of these players are better, and I see a lot of players from Indonesia and Philippines. I imagine pool is actually very popular. I saw one of the eight ball matches, and one of the leading guys was from the Philippines. He's thinking about what shot he wants. He should cut that uh, other ball in or you know, just semi-AFK or whatever. Now he's going to scratch here if he tries to hit that ball in, so this is a scratch shot, even though it looks like it's an easier shot. Well, I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to bank it in or something. I think he was just running out of time and he's like, didn't know what to do. So again, you know, what I, I don't know why the opponent scratched there, but it's time to win. You know, like the whole point is that, um, and you know, he's sitting there. I mean, he's not, he hasn't left the game. I look for a shot there. I want to get into the corner. So I'm probably just going to combo this ball in here. Now with comboing, you're trying to line that line up to where you the cue would normally hit it. And you have to hit it with a certain amount of speed, so it just takes practice to hit it in. Now I'm gonna try to back out and probably try to go for the 10 if I can, or I'm gonna hit it even harder. Yeah, so I hit a little too hard, but I have plenty of shots. And I'm just gonna try to clean around the eight maybe a little bit, or I can go for that. I probably wanna cut that ball there, yeah. I wanna cut the... Um, the 13 just because that's like the most viable shot I end up making it a really easy shot for the 9 there as well and that was planned now I I want to hit this so I can cut that other ball down there I want to cut the 15 there so I just hit it real soft see I'm planning my shots ahead now I'm going to try to uh, bounce it out a little bit, probably get a shot on the 10 as it's rolled forward. There we go. 
Now this 10 is going to bounce to the rail, and I want to kind of, I want to either, okay, so it looks like now it's straighter than it would be normally, so I want to, I could roll it forward and try to make a long shot, or I could try to roll it back. So that's what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to think where can I position this ball to get a shot on that. So no, normally I would probably want to roll it forward. I'm just aiming a shot really well because this, for whatever reason, I'm just trying to think. So I decided to roll it backwards to give myself a shot. And I did not hit it hard enough because I rushed a shot. I was losing some time there. But it's okay. I still have a shot. And that's okay. The eight, It's almost a perfect leave because now I can... You see where the ball, ball is going to bounce out. It's going to leave a really easy shot in the eight. And see, I want to sp uh, left spin that ball out so it actually makes it even easier. And you're going to see that right here. And I hit it probably a little too hard. And I hit that guy's ball, which is actually fine because that was kind of in the open. And if, say, my opponent had a shot, he would ha he would hit the three in. He could probably still win. Uh, he would hit the three in, and then he could hit the uh, five and then come back, and then he'd have to hit a long eight probably. That's all it took. And I hit it real soft. You see, it almost hit the rim there. Sometimes I'm muting my game because you know I have something else going on. So that's one thing I like about this game. It's real casual. So my I ended up breaking and I missed the break. I didn't show it. Sometimes I'm I'm trying to get better on recording these for you guys because I plan on making this a more consistent series because I play this game a lot and I just think it's uh, pretty interesting to watch. Uh, one shot videos the opponent misses a shot but he still gets a stripe in so now he stripes he did not want to be stripes this is a game that's really good because if you look at all the balls are clumped up and even though that forward rolling spin this is why I like it because it kind of almost creates a difficult a denial for my opponent so my opponent could be very good but look how many balls are clumped up so you have to be so good to start learning how to break up all those balls so you can see he's thinking about it so what opponents usually do even myself sometimes is I'll hit the easy balls I'll clean up around the shot so if he was better there he would actually hit a lot backspin and try to break those balls up and he did not do that so now he's maybe thinking about getting this hard shot he would try to he'd have to try to hit that shot he's gonna try to hit this one in the side pocket that's probably the only sh he could try to maybe to combo the other ones and he, he made that shot which is a very I thought that was a pretty challenging shot but also what's really good about him making that shot, it knocked out the eight. So uh, he, my opponent, he could have missed that shot, and it would have really blocked off the eight. So it would have been very good defensively for him. So he's still thinking about what he wants to do. Um, he can try to make this shot. He doesn't really have one. He can't bank it. He can't bank that shot in. So he's just going to kind of, oh, but look at He made enough space. So he got, he, this guy is pretty good. He was making shots see what it does here but you know he can try to bank those um the combo those in now but now he has a very hard shot and looks like he's going to scratch here and he doesn't scratch he makes it in oh see he hit it too hard see he left himself a hard enough shot even though he's a decent player but he still scratches so i'm i now i have ball in hand so i'm looking for the hardest shot and I have, look at where his 9 is at. And I know he could combo the 9 out. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to predict. I'm going to try to backspin this. And that's why I'm positioning the ball correctly. And it's harder to do in um, this game. So I'm just lining it up perfectly. And I'm going to add, you see I'm hitting that backspin to the, I'm losing physics. So I'm backing it up to the left there. And I do, I bump it out just a smidge. That's enough for me to combo those balls in. It wasn't what I really wanted because I really would want to knock out those other balls, but that's fine. And now it clumps those two balls together, and I'm going to have to combo those balls. And I'm going for a combo. It's going to bounce off the nine and boom right in. You see that? And that leaves a nice shot for the six. The nine is kind of blocked anyway, so if the opponent were to win, he'd have a harder, a difficult shot there. So I, I end up doing a backspin there. Here's the backspin trick to create, to get out of that corner hole. And now the table's like wide open for me. So I'm looking to make the long ball shots, but it's like, okay, I have to get better position here. So fortunately I have this, uh, I have the one down here. 
boom i hit the one and just cut a little bit hit too soft and i did not create a good enough shot for me so I, i'm looking for really a shot on the seven but oh look at that well now we have the blue shot so we know we have a shot in the blue but i do want to hit that seven and, and i'm just feeling ch more challenging so i'm going to actually just cut it in and the way it worked out it worked out fine i'm going to hit the five into the side pocket i'm probably going to hit it soft enough it'll roll forward i'm going to hit the two in next and they'll probably roll that forward and i'll have a clear easy shot on the eight in the in the corner so yeah i'm only able to see probably about three or four shots ahead because sometimes i'll hit a shot but better players they can see the whole table and that's the difference between like a player like myself which is a I'm, i would consider myself a pretty good a, a good player but i would not consider myself a fantastic player so i hit that ball nice and i actually didn't want to i didn't do what i just said i just hit it in but look at this and then real shot nice shot on the eight i'm playing on my android phone so it's really easy there boom I'm breaking again here and I'm using the same tactic and you can see I actually adjust it a little bit to the right. I have a very good break. We got the one and the 15. It looks like they're really close. We got a lot of balls near the rail, but I'm going for the easy shot here on solids because I don't think there's really any advantage and the two is really, li really lined up there. And I do not leave myself a very good leave there on the two, but that's okay. I got the three right here. And I'm just going to, I'm thinking about how I want to position it. So I'm probably going to backspin this. I want this to go back and to the left so I have a shot on the 2 or I have a shot on the 7. So I'm actually going to, I change my direction there because I want to spin it off the rail. And now I decided to change it again and I end up backspinning it out. Unfortunately, I popped that uh, 9 off there. I got a message there so I just had to block that out for you guys. But fortunately when the backspin happened there, now this is perfect. You see, I have a nice shot, and this is sort of the luck aspect. I was able to see where that was headed, that where the break was going to happen. I was able to pop that really difficult shot. Now really the table's open, so I only have three balls left. I'm about to, the two is a real easy shot, but the one I have to get. So how do I get the one? Well, I have to. I'm going to try to hit it just absolutely perfect. Or look at this. I think I, I'm looking at the table now, and I'm looking at that other ball. And I'm saying, hey, you know, I think I can actually get that other ball. And see, this is the difference between this lower end tables and the Vegas table. You actually have to look at the table a lot. And um, actually, and then I actually got lucky there. I was able to bank it. So you can see what I was trying to do. I was running out of time again. And look at that. I got really lucky because I didn't go for the easy two. That's one thing I noticed. Say like you have a ball just sitting right on the, a ledge. This is something else I should try to do more. And you have a more difficult shot. Remember the ball on the ledge is more defensive. And that ball can be a good defensive asset for you. So uh, your opponents really can't hit the balls in there. In that case, the ball wasn't sitting right in the middle of the pocket. So the opponent could probably hit that 12 in if he wa was able to. But you sometimes get lucky just by doing that. And I sp uh, spin that ball back on t an intention. And I could have just hit it softly. or But I wanted to just hit it real easy. But now I have to hit this 8 a little too hard. Again, I could scratch, but the 13 could probably block my scratch. And the 14 down there easily as well. But I'm not going to hit it that hard. It looks like I'm just hitting it just right. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a 8-ball pool. Um, we do a lot of PvP videos on this channel. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next chapter.